Well, hello. Um, we're back here, Electrical Fundamentals, in week number two, working on laboratory number one, or experiment number one. So um, let's get started with that. I've got a, a different hat on to uh, keep my hair controlled, but just as we'll have a little bit of fun with this uh, COVID catastrophe. So I think that pretty much exhausts this view. Let's uh, head over to um, do some preliminary work and then work on the uh, circuit itself. So let me switch cameras on you and here we go. I hear a little shuffling around because I've got to uh, move move things around a little bit. The uh, Like I uh, had mentioned, we are in uh, week number two and we're working on laboratory number one. Okay, there was nothing due uh, last week. Uh, that was just an introduction and safety. Hopefully uh, you saw those videos. Hopefully you went over uh, the syllabus and whatnot. Uh, hopefully you're really concentrating on getting a good uh, grasp, a good foundation on chapters one and two as you look at those videos and read the text and work the problems. Well, let's get going on experiment number one. So here we've got it, experiment number one. And this uh, camera view is a bit of a compromise here. Uh, I want to be able to see this, but then also see the circuit in a little bit and whatnot. So uh, bear with me if you will. This is our circuit that we're going to be uh, building on the uh, uh, board right below these uh, pages. And then we're going to uh, take the uh, data. Pretty straightforward, a uh, parallel combination of resistors and a uh, resistor that's in series. This resistor R3, that's going to be a potentiometer, so we'll talk more about potentiometers and dealing with those, a variable resistor, pretty pretty straightforward. And, and in fact, uh, if we were honest, we should probably change the symbol up a little bit, put a uh, uh, arrow through that indicating a variable resistor. One thing that's going to be important is we're going to be interested in measuring the resistance of uh, not only R1 and R2, but uh, which are going to be fixed, so we only have to measure those once. R3, we're going to be changing, so we're going to be measuring that resistance over and over again. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to try measuring this resistance of R3 by simply putting your uh, probes across here. So if these were the probes of the ohm meter, uh, first of all, we'll talk a little bit about the ohm meter. You always want to turn the power off when you measure resistance. Obviously, when you're measuring voltage, you want the power on, but measuring resistance, the power has to be off. Well, if these were the probes of the ohm meter, uh, well, I guess I can probably do better. I've got the, um, the meters right here. They're not turned on, but uh, the, uh, so let's say that we were to take the meter and we were to put it right like that. We're not going to get the resistance of just this one. We're going to get the re uh, resistance of it in parallel with this. And then this source is actually going to look like something fairly low resistance. So uh, basically a dead short through there. And we're going to then get the uh, equivalent resistance of R12. So when I want to measure, for instance, the resistance of R2, I'm going to have to unhook one end or both ends. Really, you only have to unhook one end and uh, take it out of the circuit that way. Likewise, with R3, you'll see us do that over and over again. Take it out. I'll unhook one end, bring it over here, and then I can measure that. So that's a big pitfall for students when we were doing this uh, lab face-to-face. -face. So I'll mention that again, but I, I wanted to uh, start talking about that. Well, let's see what we're going to be doing with this thing. Um, our values, 15 volts, 10K ohms for R1 and R2, and then R3 is a 500K ohm potentiometer. One thing, and I'll mention it again, you got to be careful with those K ohms, because if you take volts and divide by K ohms, you're not going to get amps, you're going to get milliamps. So be careful of the units there. Well, um, and I, I realize this may be a little hard to see on the uh, video, uh, but uh, when I uh, send you the video, I'll also send you uh, a PDF with these, so you'll, you'll have access to them in, in better, uh, uh, better resolution. Uh, the procedure, set the power supply to 15 volts. So um, we don't want to get too wound up and, and spend a lot of time trying to get it exactly 15. It's probably not that big a deal as long as we know what it is. So, uh, you know, high 14s, low 15s, as long as we know what it is, we measure it, record it, should be good to go. Then it says to vary R3, that's that variable resistor, uh, from 0 to 500 K ohms and observe the change in V23 before recording any voltages. 
Well, that's going to be important because if I go and look at a graph of V23, so there's V23, the units, you always want to have units on a graph, and uh, R3, K ohms, that's the units there. It, uh, I'm going to spoil the surprise here, but that's basically what the graph's going to look like, okay, very roughly. And the reason that I've uh, spoiled the surprise here and uh, talking about this is because if we take all of our data points or the predominant uh, majority of our data points up here, we would think that it might be horizontal. That's a, that's a linear horizontal uh, function. Uh, someone else might take them down here, and it's actually, uh, this may actually be even a little steeper than this. I, I may uh, not have got that quite right. But if someone else takes the points down here, they might think it's a linear and vertical which they'd both be wrong. It's not, it's not true. So we're going to have to figure out where this changes the most and probably concentrate on taking those points. We could probably do with just a couple points here and a couple points there and take the majority of our points in there. So that's going to be important and that's what that step is about. Um, vary R3 from 0 to 500 k ohms and observe the change in V23 before recording any voltages. Then based on that, what we learn from there, we want to pick a set of about 15 values. You know, if we have 12 um, good ones, that's probably okay. If we have some ones that, you know, maybe we take a few too many down here or a few too many here, then we have to go back and add some more and we end up with 20 points. That's, that's okay too. Um, so around 15 points. And each one of the points we're going to for a particular value of R3, we we'll want to measure that and record that. Uh, we will then want to measure V12, V13, uh, and V23. Let's talk a little bit about that. Where do we get that on the uh, circuit there? Well, I'll grab the uh, probes here. V12 is the voltage at 1 with respect to 2. This would also be V12. This, this point is the same. V12, V... Um, and I should probably be a little more careful of my polarity. We'll take one as the, the leading. We would have got a negative sign on that measurement. So there's one, two, voltage one, two. I don't know how well these colors will show up on the, uh, the, the video. Then voltage two, three, voltage two, three. And then finally, voltage one, three, right there. Okay. So that's what we're going to be measuring in terms of voltage. And again, we measure the voltage carefully while the circuit is on. Okay, so moving on then. We've talked some about that. What about that potentiometer? Um, how do you get the potentiometer? Well, you can... Uh, Theoretically, a potentiometer just looks like this. It's a, it's a resistance, and we then tap the, uh, the resistance. And if I measure, again, uh, let's go back to the ohmmeter here. If I measure from here to here, that's going to be one resistance. And as this slides over, this R1 is going to increase. So as we move this over, R1 will increase and R2 will decrease. Okay, if we move it back this way, R1 gets smaller and R2 gets larger. And if we measure the resistance from there to there, it should always be a fixed value, uh, that being uh, R1 plus R2. Now, um, you, they, they probably make these. It, it, it wouldn't be very common. A, a circular arrangement is, is, a, is much more common. But before we head to that, you can actually uh, get one from a pencil. If you need to, uh, let's say, make yourself a voltage divider and, uh, and need a resistor, graphite, that'll make a good resistor. So you can just open this pencil up with a knife uh, until you get the lead out. And you would then um, put a uh, voltage across here and then you could tap it somewhere in here because you've opened it up you've got the uh, you just take a pencil and like you're going to sharpen it up the, the whole side of it just just uh, cut half of it off and then um, depending on where you tap it you will have a voltage divider because the resistance is changing so if you um, look at the resistance of the whole uh, uh, graphite then you break it up into R1 and R2. Well, it's a, a kind of a fun little uh, MacGyver trick and whatnot, but uh, it's a lot more common to have a potentiometer like this. And this is uh, uh, one here in, in real life. I'll try and give you a view on that. This is a fairly small one. Um, they, they, they get much smaller than this, of course, but one we're going to be using on our circuits a little larger than that. This uh, twist here. 
If you've ever uh, changed the uh, volume, twisted a knob and changed the volume on an older radio or something like that, um, you've probably um, uh, done one of these. If you've done speed control on a motor or something, you've probably uh, changed a potentiometer, a variable uh, resistor. So we package it up and it looks like this. Now we're really only going to have to use one side of this. Uh, so we're just going to use the middle leg and either one of these. Okay, um, because if I uh, look at the resistance from here, if I put my uh, probes on this, measuring the uh, resistance of that, and then as I, oops, see if I can do this here. So I put the uh, probes like that, and then as I move this, if I, I bring it back here, very little resistance. If I then turn it clockwise this way, a lot of resistance. Okay, so that's our potentiometer. Here's how we're going to put that into our circuit. So we go back to our circuit and we put that thing in. Like I said, we're going to use the middle leg and either one of the outsides. So I could hook up these two if I wanted to. I'll just choose to use this one and that one. Okay. So if you happen into lab in this particular experiment and one of the wires is broken off, as long as it's not the middle one, that's fine. You can still use that thing. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, we're going to um, need to uh, build this thing. And one of, uh, one of the things, I guess maybe before I get into that, maybe I should talk a little bit about R1 and R2. Those are fixed value 10K ohm resistors. So those are going to um, look a little like this. I've got a kit of resistors here, and I'll just go back and find the 10K. And th there they are right there. Pretty straightforward 10K resistors. The, th the reason why I wanted to show you on this is the colors. You're going to see the resistors have uh, colors on them, and it's a color code. And there's uh, little tools to remember that and whatnot, or you can get an app on your phone to help you with it, or they make little bookmarks or something like this that you can uh, use that. I'm not going to test you on that. Um, I think the civil engineers probably don't need to commit that to memory. Um, if you're going into electrical engineering, that's something that you're probably going to begin to pick up with slowly as you as you learn this. So you, I would much rather you put your energies into practicing solving problems and trying to remember the color codes. But I do want you to know that the color codes exist, and that's how we figure out what resistors are. Because if you just if you just look at the uh, the resistors here, if you just have a you know you have a bag of those, it's hard to figure out what they are until you recognize the color codes. Okay, so let's talk about uh, building this thing. And I always encourage students, and this is another thing where students really struggle, is I encourage students to build it with the same type of geometry that you see on the page. Okay, that may not be the most efficient way to build it and whatnot, but as we're getting started, if you um, say, well, okay, I'm going to set up a node here and a node there, and I'm going to build it very much like I see it on the page, I think that's a big help. So here's how we're going to build this thing, like this. Uh, we're going to start out across here. We'll have our source. So this is going to be our plus 15 volts. This is going to be our ground. We'll have our resistance 1. We'll have our resistor 2 and resistor 3. And you might see that we've changed just a little bit. We haven't put a wire in here. Okay, there's, you know, there's no money in putting a wire in there. This point is the, is the same as that point. Um, this point right here, same as that point right there. And we should uh, recognize that. So we put that there. There's our uh, R1, our R2, and then we have our potentiometer there. Now, have, getting ready to build this thing, one thing that we need to again recognize, and it's what I started this lab with, is that if you want to measure the resistance of any one of these, you have to unhook it, or at least unhook one end of it. Okay. Uh, case in point, we're going to be measuring the p resistance of this potentiometer a lot, so we're going to have to unhook one end of it. And I think I'll probably unhook this one. It doesn't matter which one. I'll probably unhook that one. So as I want to measure the resistance of this, because, again, get the probes here. If I'm measuring the resistance of this, and I don't have to worry about the polarity with resistance. If I'm measuring from there to there, I'm not getting the resistance of just this. I'm getting the resistance of this in parallel with that, and that's not what I want. Okay. So let's go to a, a, a picture that I have of this right here. So if I want to measure the resistance of this potentiometer from there to there, okay, 
resistance of the potentiometer from there to there. If you uh, understand that and, and, and get that down, you uh, you learned a lot from this lab. So, okay, before we head to the lab, I think I'll tackle these questions so we can just do the lab and uh, I'll send you on your way with the, the data. Here's our experiment sheet. And I think from our lab introduction, I think in the introduction, I used the word um, uh, sketch and I changed that to construct because if you want to very neatly uh, build that graph there, that, that, that's fine. Uh, you can do that. Uh, but uh, I'll be sending this to you um, in a, uh, um, probably not a PDF on this because I'd like you to be able to use it if you want to. So I'll send it to you in a Word document. If that's a hardship for someone, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you in a PDF. But uh, And maybe I'll just send you both. Uh, but you'll have this in a Word document. So you could actually go in, make a graph in Excel. You all took Excel last year, hopefully. Uh, you could uh, uh, make a graph in Excel and put it there. So. Uh, that'd be a good way to, to do this. So construct a plot of V23 versus R3 with R3 on the horizontal. So my, my plot is a, a, a middle C. It's, it's not very good. It's missing the uh, scales here. I didn't put scales on it because um, I don't know what voltage values we're going to be using. This would be a change slightly depending on whether we're at 14 and a half or 15 or 15 and a half. Uh, I did label my axes. I put units on my axes, uh, so that, that's not too bad. I just need to put the uh, the scale on there. So that's my graph, and then I'm ready to go to the next question. What's the range of values of R3 for which the system to the left of points 2 and 3? Let me grab the circuit back over here. So left of 2 and 3. So what they're talking about is essentially this portion of the circuit. Okay, will act as an ideal voltage source with an error of no more than 1%. Well, that'd be kind of cool. If we were building a um, power supply, we would like to be able to, no matter how much this resistance change, the voltage here, V23, remain relatively constant, relatively within 1%. So that's what we are looking for there. So let's answer that question. We're going to use our graph to do that. So we're going to go up here, and from your graph, this is going to go to some asymptotic value, probably somewhere fairly close to 7.5. And, and again, that depends on what your uh, voltage is, whether you're at 15, 14.5, 15.5, and so forth. But this asymptotic value that this goes to, what you're going to do is take that value, whatever that is, 7, 7.5, and, and take 1% of it and draw a line down here. Okay. So this distance in here is 1% of whatever that value is. Draw the line. And then where this line crosses, you can come down. So it crosses the curve at that point, and you drop down. And then what we know is for any value of resistance greater than that, anything over here, it's acting as an ideal source. That is, if we look at this, it's constant within 1%. Okay, so you've just made yourself a, a crude voltage supply. Well, not very crude. It's within 1%, so that's, that's not too bad. So that's what we're looking for there. And my guess is you're going to need to replay that piece of the tape two or three times because uh, when we used to do this face-to-face, -face, I'd talk about this in the pre-lab, then I'd have to, have to talk about it again in the lab. So um, I'm not going to belabor it, but... Uh, be ready to, to rewind this portion and, and get that. And again, I guess I'll belabor it just a tiny bit here. This goes up to an asymptotic value. Whatever that asymptotic value is over here, you take 1% of it and draw a line. So this line is parallel to that line, and they just differ by 1% of this value. Where this line then crosses, you come down, and that's your value of resistance. Any resistance greater than that, it's going to act as an ideal source within 1%. Okay. So then it asks us to, what do we got here? And again, uh, 
I'll, I'll be sending these to you and th this one in particular in a Word document so you'll you'll be able to see these a little better but find I1, I2, and I3 by measuring the voltage across the resistors uh, by multi measuring the voltage across the resistors each current is going through and dividing by the measured value of the resistor. So we're not going to measure uh, current directly. Next laboratory, lab experiment number two, we will measure current directly. Uh, but we're going to use the old trick where if we measure the voltage across something and divide by the known resistance, so we're going to double check and make sure that we know that resistance, we could then get the current. Okay. So for instance, I1 through here, we divide by the voltage, across, take the voltage across this resistor, divide by that resistance. Take the voltage across this resistor and divide by its resistance, we'll get I2. Take the voltage across our potentiometer, divide by its ever-changing value, whatever particular value that is, and we'll get our current I3. Then of course, if we look at this, we know that with Kirchhoff's law, if you look at Kirchhoff's law here, you have this I1 coming in and it's splitting and going to I2 and I3. So we would be able to say mathematically by Kirchhoff's current law that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I've tried to summarize that right here with I1 is V12 divided by R1. Is that correct? Well, that's a voltage across here, V12 divided by R1. Then I2 is V23 over R2. Well, V23, that's that voltage right there, isn't it? Divided by R2, that's that resistor. And then I3 is V23. That's the same voltage, right? Because this is the same point. This point and this point's all the same. You'll see that when we build it. So same voltage in the numerator, but I divide by a different resistor, and that, that happens to be whatever particular value the potentiometer is for that data point. Okay, You are asked to do this current measurement, show that I1, I2, and I3 obey Kirchhoff's law for at least three different data points. So that would be the resistor value, the resistor value of R3 for those three data points. Okay three data points. So we've got I1, we've got I2, we've got I3. Now you have to be careful with this because remember you're going to be dividing volts by k ohms probably and it's not going to be amps, it's going to be milliamps, 10 to the minus 3 amps, milliamps, 10 to the minus 3 amps. Now you have a thousand in the denominator, you get something small in the numerator, milli. And of course, a statement of Kirchhoff's uh, law there. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. See if that works out. Probably won't be perfect, but it should be within experimental error. And then um, just a matter of, and, and again, as you, as you uh, write these, I mean, you could uh, put annotations on your graph up here for this one. Uh, you can show your calculations here. You could type that out or you can write it out neatly. Um, then sign your name. You can put electronic signature on there uh, or you can uh, actually sign it, put the date on it, and you can turn that in. If it's a, um, if you've done this all on the computer, uh, you can uh, save it to PDF and uh, email it to me. If you have done it uh, by hand, um, make a PDF by uh, scanning it or taking a picture of it. If you want to just send me a JPEG, that's fine too. Uh, so let's look at the circuit and get started with uh, that. I've got the uh, circuit here. So, what do we have? Um, let me pull this. Well, let me concentrate on this part of the circuit just a little bit, and then I'm going to pull the camera back out, and we'll see the the source. So, I essentially have uh, node point one there. Got a So there's one, and I've got that designated. There is two, I've got that designated, and there is three, and that's uh, designated. Okay, so like I said, there's point one, there's point two, 
and there is 0.3. So I've got a um, plus 15 volts at point one going into um, R1. And then I have R2 here coming to point three. I've put this uh, little jumper here. And incidentally, the way these breadboards uh, work is all of these are actually hooked together. So if I put something in this one, it's hooked to that one. So right here, this resistor, that resistor right there is hooked to that uh, lead of the potentiometer is actually hooked to this wire. Uh, I could have actually just put this wire right into there, but uh, I put that in there. I, I don't know, it extends a little more comfortable with that maybe. So there's R1, there's R2, and there is our potentiometer. A little bit off screen there. We'll zoom out in just a minute. That's our R3, okay? So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then we're back with ground. Okay, so let's let me pull this up. Who knows what kind of a noise that made in the microphone? Hopefully, the microphone's still working. Um, so, what we've uh, got here then is you can see the potentiometer here. There's the knob that I can turn. Okay. Over here we have our plus uh, plus voltage. We're going to make sure it's at 15 and actually these are all connected together so it jumps from there to there and that's our plus 15. And then over here just off screen I've got the ground that's coming in on this green to these leads to there and there. So this is like if, if you know if you had a 15 volt battery putting the positive terminal right there the negative terminal right there. That's what I essentially have with this source. Okay, and I'm going to uh, do some measurements. So I get my uh, meters here. I've got these uh, fluke meters. These are actually nice meters, 15 Bs. If you're uh, thinking about uh, doing something with uh, this business, these, these are, uh, as far as fluke meters go, these are pretty inexpensive meters, but they, they, they have a lot of the advantages of, of fluke. So this one I want to measure resistance. So I'm going to uh, turn it on to uh, resistance and I'll tuck that right in here. Okay, and it says uh, out of range. Okay, that's what the OL means, out of range. But if I take the, uh, the two leads, and you can see I've kind of cobbled some wire onto these so I can get them down into those holes if I need to. But if I touch the leads together, it should go to about zero, okay? So much for zero, there we go. There's about half an ohm, okay? So that's probably pretty good. We're gonna, uh, measuring a, a fraction of an ohm is really hard to do. So whether it ends up at a half ohm or three ohms doesn't worry me at all, because we're talking about 10,000. That's gonna be a lot easier to measure, okay? So there's that. And we'll come back to that in a, a bit. And if we, if we were in lab, you would always be then um, jumping from volts to ohms. But uh, to try and keep this kind of easy for you to watch and easy for me to do, I got two meters here. Actually, I got a whole lab of meters because you're not in the lab, unfortunately. Um, so I grabbed another meter and... We're going to put this on volts. That's volts with a squiggle, so that must be AC. And this is volts with a uh, solid line, that must be DC. So I'm going to put it up there. And maybe I can get something to prop this up with. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so I got some glare now and then, but uh, we should be good. So we got our uh, volts, they're auto ranging. That's probably fine for this lab. So. I'll take and uh, I'm going to make sure I haven't shorted anything out, haven't dropped a paper clip on there or something like that. We'll uh, turn this on and you'll be able to see that the power is turned on because we this, this, this whole board is, is set up to do a lot of different things. Happens to have a, a couple of uh, seven segment displays down here. When those are on, it's on. So let me uh, check this thing then. I'm going to start by putting the, um, uh, I think I can just measure this. If I measure from 
Got my leads all mixed up. Okay, if I measure from there, put my the black one there at three, that's the ground, and I put the um, red one up there at one. Okay, I think. Well, why isn't this working? Sure, I got it all set. There we go. And you, you have to press hard against these. And that, that brings up another point. Sometimes when students are trying to measure a resistance, they'll, they'll take a resistor and they'll be, uh, you know, trying to just hold the, the, the lead on it like that. Okay. That's not going to get you anywhere. You're not going to get good enough contact to really get a good measurement. And I should probably turn the power off for uh, doing this. Okay. So whenever you want to make a measurement, even if you want to pull it out of a circuit, just pull it out and put it in a, another spot, okay? And that's probably this is probably as good a time as any to, now that I got the power off, I'm going to measure the resistance of this one because I want to make sure it's about 10,000. And I want to measure the resistance of this one, uh, so make sure it's about 10,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this one out because if I were to measure the uh, resistance of this, remember there's a current path through this source from there to there, so I'd get the equivalent resistance of that one. So I'm just gonna pop this out, put it in a uh, unused one up there. And then I can uh, take this and uh, just measure just like that. So I got about nine point, why don't we take it at 9.8? K ohms. Okay, so I'll write that uh, down. That was um, resistance one. Put on my engineering pad. Nine point eight K ohms. So leave that there for you. And don't want to change too many things, so I'll put this back. There we go. I put that resistor one back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this um, resistor two. So I will just uh, move this leg off somewhere. Probably put it there. And now I'm going to measure the resistance across that one. And I'll call that 9.8 also, 9.8. So I'll write those down, 9.8. Okay, so that's for R2, and those are, those are fixed values. If their temperature changes quite a bit or something, they might uh, change a little bit, but uh, we shouldn't be loading them up uh, that much. Hopefully we won't. Okay, um, you might say, well, those aren't 10K. Well, they, uh, if I look at those and my eyes aren't good enough, uh, but I think those have a, um, the, the colors in the last band, the last band on here is the tolerance and they're a gold band, so they should be within 5%. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on there. So, that's the thing. One of the things about uh, engineering, we always want to try and build tolerance into our circuits. Because if if we have to say that that resistor's got to be 10 k ohms, it's going to be very expensive to build these things. If I have a robust design that will tolerate that resistor being anywhere from 8 k to 12 k, I can put a really poor resistor in there, and I can then build this thing much more cost effective. Well, I'm going to then move this resistor uh, back in and put it in the the circuit. Okay, so now I think I'll change things up on you a little bit um, because I want to be able to turn this knob while measuring this voltage. I'm going to measure voltage with this meter. There's DC voltage right there. And 
We'll put that lead right there. And I'll put this one right there. Okay, so I now have my this voltmeter here. This voltmeter here is set up measuring uh, voltage, and it's measuring the voltage at two with respect to three. Okay, so I will uh, turn this on. Okay. I'm going to take this other one that's still set up on voltage and we're going to double check. We'll come down here. This is measuring uh, the voltage 1, 3, which is essentially our source, right? So it looks like we are at about 14 and 3 quarters, 14.77. That's close enough. I'm not going to mess with it. I could, I could adjust it. I'll just leave it like that. As long as I know what it is, that's fine. Okay. So that's in the ballpark. And now this one is measuring the voltage, the voltage two, three, that is. And if I turn this knob here, you can see it changes. Okay, so that's clear clockwise, going to about seven and a quarter, seven and a half. And there I'm, I'm turning it a lot. Hasn't changed a whole bunch. But then when I get down here to far counterclockwise, I have a lot of change. Very low resistance, or excuse me, very small voltage down there because it's a uh, relatively low resistance. And then as I increase it, so I don't, if I turn this knob just a tiny bit, it changes a lot. Tiny bit more changes a lot. And then I can really just crank this thing around and it doesn't change very much. So what are we learning? We're learning at the uh, end of this uh, that's fairly close to full counterclockwise, that's where it's changing the most. Okay, so if I were to go look at my graph, So looking at this graph, this must be full counterclockwise, this must be clockwise. And depending on which leads of the potentiometer you use, you, you might be backwards from that, okay? So it looks like I'm gonna to wanna to take lots of data points down here, not so many data points up there. Okay, well, let's do that. So we will start down here. I'm going to start fully counterclockwise and let's um, rearrange things. I think I will uh, use these probes and this meter to measure voltage and I'm going to uh, dedicate this one. I'll turn off my power here. I'm going to dedicate this to get the power off. So put this in ohms. And you can see if, if, I, if I measure the uh, resistance there, I get 6.6 .6 ohms, but that's not what the potentiometer is. I need to pull this thing out. I need to put it in a vacant spot. And that's 6.8. So I mean, I was getting, it was this, this resistor was, was changing it some. So there's 6.5, okay. So I'm going to start my uh, data recording. So we have to watch the symbol here because it's auto ranging 6.2. So this is going to be 6.2 ohms. Okay. Um, so maybe I'd be better off taking that out. Okay. And, uh, I'm, I'm writing on my engineering paper with pens so you can see it better. Don't, don't try that at home. So there's 6.2 ohms. Most of these are probably going to be K ohms, but this is going to be uh, ohms. So that's 6.2. I will go ahead and hook this back into here. 
and I should be ready to, I've, I've still got this one hooked in, but it's only hooked in at one point. It's, it's then open to here, so there's not going to be any current into our ohm meter, so we're fine. We can go ahead and power up. And now what do I want to do? I want to measure voltage 1, 2. Voltage 1, 2. So let's go ahead and get that. Where's that? Well, that's putting the red at 1 and the black at 2. So I got 14.75, 14.75. And then I want to measure voltage 1, 3. Voltage 1, 3. So that should be about 14.75. Hmm. And then I want to measure voltage 2, 3. So I'll put my red lead at 2, put my black at 3, and I'm getting 0.009 volts. 0 0.008, not much. Okay, so that's a data point. Let's try another one. And I'm going to um, I'm going to do uh, two or three data points, and then I'm I'm not going to figure that anyone wants to watch me do all 15 of them. Turn the camera off. I'll get the other 15 data points, and uh, I'll send them uh, to you and. You'll then have everything that you need to uh, make your graphs and come up with your conclusions and get the uh, write-up taken care of. So now what I want to do is I want to turn this thing off. I'm going to pull the potentiometer out and hook it in there. Then I'm going to move this a little bit and it's very touchy. So why don't I go with that 0.9? I will call it 0.95 at K. You gotta you gotta stick with something. 0.95 K. And I need to be. I recorded that. And I need to be very careful of this. I've got ohms here. Probably that a lot of my rest of my numbers will be, be k ohms. So I've got the k ohms there. So I put that in. And, and that's one frustration that students have. These are very, very touchy and they'll, they'll tend to move a little bit. Uh, they don't move a lot. And if you look at the, um, the, the, how the numbers work out, that moving is not going to make a very big difference. So we've got that back in. We're ready to power up. We've got the power on. We can now do our voltages again. I'm going to take voltage 1, 2. So red at 1, black at 2. Voltage 1, 2, 14.2. 14.2. Okay. And then... Um, I want voltage 1, 3, so red at 1, black at 3, 14.74, and then V2, 3, so red at 2, black at 3. I got 0 0.307, 0 0.307. Okay, so what's that look like? I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing off. So I've got my uh, data point there. V13, where's 13? 1, 13 1, is across there, isn't it? That's across the source. That should remain fairly constant. And if we look at three significant figures, which we kind of like three significant figures in engineering, it is constant. Okay. Let's see. 
I think that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and take uh, one more uh, data point. We'll run this. Uh, we've got the power off, so I'll pull this down here, measuring the resistance. There we go, about 120k ohms. Okay, about 120k. I'll write that down here. 120k ohms. Pull this back out. Is that still 120k? Yeah, close enough. Turn this on. Get my voltage one, two. Yeah, one, two. Seven point six six. And then I want one, three. That should be what? Better be about 14.7 something, right? 14.74. And finally, 2.3. So, 2.3. So, put the black at 3, the red at 2. 7.07. Double check that. Yeah, 7.07. .07. Good. Okay. So, well, let's look at the um, data and we'll look at the circuit one more time before we start to look at that uh, data. I think that was just the meters timing out. Okay, so we know that 1, 3, that's the source. That should be constant, right? And what about 1, 2, and 1, 3? Well, if we look at Kirchhoff's voltage law, grab the circuit here. There we go. There is 1, 3. If I look at 1, 2, and 2, 3, this 1, 2 plus this 2, 3, that should be the same as 1, 3. So this plus this should equal that. Let's see if that's true. Okay, so um, my data, and I, I certainly have to complete this table for you. Uh, we've got our uh, values of the uh, R1 and R2. That's good. And so if I look at the one, three, that was across the source. That should be fairly constant. I like that. That's good. And then we say that um, this one, two plus this two, three. So this plus that. So that plus that should equal that. Well, that plus that, that's pretty close to that. That plus that, that's fairly close to that, not too bad. Okay, we've got some experimental error here. You know, the connections are multimeters. Uh, we'll talk about that. That's a good thing to talk about. This plus this equals that. Well, we said this is about zero, didn't we? I mean, that, that's very, so if, if I've got, if I keep these at, at uh, three significant figures, I'm going to have to drop this and that and that, right? Okay, I guess that'd go to point 0.1. But it looks like we are in the ballpark. I think I'm pretty comfortable with this uh, data. Obviously, if I look at uh, in terms of where the uh, points are, it looks like I have a point that is um, way down here. 
I've got another one that's uh, up here a little bit. And then this last one that I took was somewhere up there, wasn't it? Okay. So I need to obviously come back and take quite a few more points in that range because I've got these and I've got that one. So I'll come back, take, take a couple points there, take several points there, and maybe a couple more points in there. So we'll get uh, 12 or 15 data points for you, and you should be able to um, make some good conclusions from that. Now, it's not going to be perfect. You, you see this. I mean, this plus this, not quite equal to that. I mean, the mathematician, they, they say this plus that's not equal to that. Well, the engineer is going to say this plus that's pretty close to that. I'm happy. Um, this plus this, pretty close to that. I'm, I'm happy. They're not exact. Why aren't they exact? Because we have um, errors in the experiment. Okay, what are some of those errors? Well, if we look at our meters, our meters aren't perfect. They were jumping around a little bit. Uh, I don't think that we have any data point that's an outlier that we have to be suspicious of, but uh, we just have a, a, a small uh, errors. We don't have any gross errors. We didn't measure something backwards or wrong or something like that. We just have slight errors in these. When we put these into the circuit, they will uh, introduce loading in the circuit. So, so that can do it. Our source may not remain perfectly constant. And you could argue, um, you know, I'm going to take off that last digit, but someone could argue, well, that's, that's not the same as that. Okay. So the source can change as it heats up. Um, this is plugged into the wall at my uh, office, so that uh, if that voltage changed, hopefully this will uh, counteract that, but it might not be perfect, so that could change it a little bit. Shooting this at about the time when everyone comes home, takes a shower, and makes dinner, the voltage, the wall voltage out of the plug-in, that's going to change some. So we've got some variables uh, there. Now, the one thing that students love to blame for their errors is the resistance of the wires. Well, trust me, when we take these numbers, if you take, let's say, uh, 15 volts and you start dividing by these large values, you get a very small value for current. So with as small a current as we have, the resistance of these is really effectively zero. Okay. I mean, you can test this here. Let's uh, try this. Let's see which one I'm hooked up to right here. Good. Okay, so there's resistance. And we'll put this, come down here. I'm still on screen. That's good. Okay, we take one of these wires. We'll take this from here and put it into there. And what's it saying? Getting less and less and less, isn't it? Maybe that's a source of error. Maybe I wasn't, uh, you know, patient enough with this meter. Auto ranging is fairly slow. If I know about what range it's going to be in, I'm better off to, to put it in a fixed range. So it looks like we've got about 0.1 ohm there. But if I if I dispense of this wire and actually just put these together, what do we have there? Well, hopefully it goes down to less than 0.1 because. Uh, We'd hate to say that the wire had negative resistance, eh, which it's eh, maybe it'll get there. But there's there's uh, I don't think there's going to it should go back less than 0 0.1, which is not going to do. So there's some error in the meter itself. Okay, particularly at these very low resistance values. Uh, and, and speaking of that, this uh, 6.2 ohms, this is the one that I would be somewhat suspect of. It's it's hard for a a meter. Uh, like this to make a really good measurement there. But I think we've got some good data. I'm going to uh, make sure I put this wire back here. Oh, we got to point one there. So I'm going to put this uh, back in here. Put that back in the, uh, I get the source. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the, uh, the rest of the data so that I can get that to you so that you can then finish this thing up. So you're going to build a uh, graph of V23 versus R3, a proper graph with all the pieces that a proper graph has. You're going to talk about the value that it's a, uh, for R3, where it's a ideal source with no more than 1% deviation.
Go back, rewind the video and look at that. And then you're going to talk about I1, I2, and I3. You're going to calculate those for three different data points. Okay. And I would probably take my data points in the middle of the graph. I think data points way down here, as you have seen, are kind of hard to measure. So I would pick some data points in the middle, and I think you'll get a little better demonstration of that. And again, that's not because there's anything wrong with Kirchhoff's law. It's that we tend to have some more error in our measurement as we measure some of these extreme values. So if you walk away from this thing with recognizing how you measure resistance, that you have to unhook this thing so that you don't measure equivalent resistance, if you recognize that the resistance in the wires is not why you're getting your, your uh, error, you've gone a long ways to getting what you need out of this laboratory. Well, I will uh, leave it there. I'll be sending you the uh, lab uh, description and the uh, questions along with the uh, data when I give you the uh, video. I'll see you when we do experiment number two in week number three. Take care till or maybe I better check the schedule before I uh, sign off here. Yeah, in week number three, we are going to do laboratory number two, and then we have the exam. So, good. Well, take care till next week, and I'll see you then.